Hi everybody, my name is Michelle J. Yaskell. I'm also known as Joy Michelle, and I'm here to teach you how to make a simple lace edge pot holder. This is the most traditional of pot holders, and it's very easy to make. Um, you will need a, uh, a standard 18 peg loom. I have a metal loom, and I also have a, um, uh, a number 8 or a letter H crochet hook. I also have a, a small pair of scissors. And um, I also have the, um, the loopers. You need a total of eight of 36. You're making this check, checkerboard pattern. You will need 18 for the um, for one side and 18 for the next size of a different color. I have uh, salmon and I also have um, uh, the lime colored. And I also have and in most uh, most potholder kits there are uh, there is a um, a metal hook that I don't use because I prefer to use my fingers. I think it's much easier. And what I do is um, to begin the potholder, you place um, 18 loops or what I call loopers onto the um, onto the loom or what is called the, the warp, which is the initial placement of the loopers onto the loom. And what I try to do to make a perfect pot holder is I try to make the uncurled part of the looper face down, and I have the right side, the, the curled part facing me or face up. It should be facing you or face up. I place them all on the uh, the warp, like I said, the initial placement of the loopers, and then what you actually weave will be the weft. And I have um, um, I take one one looper, and like I said, I have it um, face uh, the curled part facing me, face up, and I'm going to start over. So what I do is I take the uh, the second looper, I hold it up, and I put it put my my looper inside with the curl part facing me. The uncurl part is uh, face down, and I go over, under, over, under, over, under, and I start weaving to the end of the line or the end of the row. Go from one peg to the to the opposite peg or the opposing peg. I started over under. Now I'm going to go over under over. I go under. I lift the um, the first um, looper over here. Lift it. So I go under. Over, under, over, under, over. I'm trying to keep the um, the curled part straight. Curled part facing me or on top. This is the I mean this is the uncurled part. This is the uh, the um, this is the curled part. This is the uncurled part of the looper. And I try to keep uh, keep my weaving straight because there's not much space between each of the pegs. So after I weave this right here, I'm going to try to uh, keep it keep it straight. And at the very end, I, I weave to the end of uh, end of the row, the end of a powder, end of the loom, and this is what I should get. Um, and what I do is I check the back, which is the right side. Of the pot holder, and I look to see if there are any weaving mistakes, and I look to see if there are any hanging threads that I have to uh, cut off because I think they may be a bit unsightly. You know, any very large threads get cut off, and um, I look to see if anything has to be rewoven. Now, now you see over here. This is not quite. This is not perfect. 
Uh, some of the um, the loopers, be because of the weaving, uh, it uh, it's un some are uncurled and some are are curled. So I have to, uh, and in this case, it was the um, most of them were the uh, the salmon colored. So what I have to do is I have to reweave the ones that are not the loopers that are not perfect. I have to reweave them one at a time. I have to take it off. Anything that's not perfect, I have to reweave. Reweave. Over, under, over, under, under, over, under, over. I reweave them. Reweave. Hold on. Oh, I keep reweaving. Anything. I have to reweave this whole thing, most of it. And then at the very end, I could show you a trick because it's very easy. It's very um, difficult sometimes to do to do the last looper because it's near the end, there's not much space over here. So the 18th looper that you're weaving, you could start reweaving, you know, a few, few rows at a time, like this. And then what you could do is, to save time, to make it easy, you could stretch Stretch the loop, the looper, from one peg to the other, and then you take, you pick up um, each loop and stretch it over the uh, the looper. Every other loop, every other loop. See so it going like this. Every other loop. You're skipping over. And you look to see if there are any, look again to see if there's any looper that is twisted, anything that has to be redone. Oh, like I said, all the, this should be a perfect, it should be perfect like this. You check for any um, weaving errors. This is the wrong, this is the right side. This is the wrong side. And then everything should be perfect like this. This should be all uncurled, and this should be curled. This is the wrong side. Curled, uncurled. This should be uncurled or the right side. And then what you do is, if you want the um, the line colored loop to um, to show, you want to end with the line colored loop. What you do is you start with the um, you start with the uh, the salmon colored or coral colored loops. You're going. What you're going to do? You start on one edge. You take, you pick one off the, the peg. You take the second the second loop, and then you put the second loop into the first loop. Put one into the other, and you just let it drop off the peg the loom. You take the third and you put it into the second or the previous loop and you keep going. Put one loop into the previous loop like that. It becomes a lace pattern. And to make it even faster, you could take the crochet hook, you put it between the loop. You see that? And then you put it into the previous, you put the previous loop into, into the new loop. I mean, you put the, uh, the new loop into the previous loop. And you keep, you keep going around. You go counterclockwise. I'm going counterclockwise this, in this case. Keep going around and around. Gonna go all the way around counterclockwise, 
around the uh, the four around the four corners, around the four edges until at the very end you want to end the loop. I mean, you want to end the palm holder. So what you do is you take the last loop. You're going to put it in, right? And you don't want it to unravel. So in order to secure the pot holder, what you do is you're going to make a double knot. You make one, an extra knot. There's your knot. And there's your pot holder. Thank you for viewing this pot hold, this, um, this video, ladies and gentlemen. And happy weaving. Thank you. Bye-bye.